we've got joining us all the way from the United Kingdom, we've got Kyle Diamond joining us. Thank you so much, Kyle. Thank you for having me. All right, what a way to come back for Israel Yesaya. And I would say happy Hista to you, of course. Uh, yeah, I, I, I feel like uh, obviously it happened so recently that the energy is still there from watching it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I was kind of left in, in awe by, by Israel's performance. Um, absolutely incredible. Probably the biggest win of his career. Okay. I know that Alex Pereira is his biggest rival, so I'm sure that he'll feel exactly the same. Okay, I could see that um, Israel Desanya was really determined in this fight, uh, in his workout and the confidence he had knowing that he was prepared as well as he could get the results against Alex Pereira this time. Did you also have that um, optimism before the bout? I thought it would be a, quite a big factor going into this one. You know, like him and Alex Pereira clearly have a rivalry and Alex Pereira knocked him out last time around. So to go into a straight rematch with that same guy, I thought would play a factor. But that's what has impressed me so much is he went in there and instead of shying away from, from this huge stage and having to face this guy again, he went in there and kind of beat him at his own game in a way mm. and traded with him, which a lot of people would have said don't do and he went in there and did it and proved that he is the best middleweight in the world right now okay he was really smart israel was really really smart in this encounter i saw him lauren pereira in the early and he was also setting him up for that knockout when he backed into that ropes i saw that he was trapping alex pereira to come in so that he could finish him over there and that was what when that knockout happened, how did you see that? When the knockout happened, how Israel was able to lure him to that corner and then get the job done? Yeah, I mean, when you go up against a guy like Alex Pereira, that might be the most dangerous strategy, uh, letting him get close to you. The whole plan for Israel last time out was to avoid that opportunity. And then this time around, I guess they tried to flip that on its head and get Alex to, to come towards him and open up. And when he did, try and land that counter, which is incredibly dangerous against someone like Alex Pereira. But he went in there and did it. So what more can you say? Just absolutely incredible This was the position that Israel used here, luring Alex to this corner. This move was similar to the end of that first round in their last fight. But this time, there was no buzzer to save Pereira. Now, the next punch dropped Pereira there, you could see, and he was out cold even after that fist. Do we say that Israel really calculated his time in this time so as not to get a repeat of the last uh, mistake he made? Yeah, absolutely. It's such a dangerous strategy to to do that. Um, you have to be absolutely on point with your timing, with your movement, because if Alex Pereira lands the first shot, then it, it could have been all over and people would have been questioning Izzy for, for standing there and trading with him. But he got it absolutely punch perfect this time around and... Yeah, what a statement. Okay, let's now look at Pereira. Pereira was unleashing body hooks. I saw it in the first round, and he and a knee to the ribs of Israel Adesanya, which um, Israel Adesanya was um, backed against the cage. So you would agree with me that um, the knockout came from nowhere. Pereira did not see this coming initially because he was on the offensive uh, while um, Israel Adesanya was on the defensive. So where did the knockout come up from? Israel really calculated this move because we saw it from nowhere with a Pereira being on the offensive and Israel on the defensive. Yeah, I mean, incredibly, he used Alex Pereira's greatest strength against him. Alex Pereira is an incredible finisher with huge knockout power, and that mm. makes him extremely confident. He, he fights uh, with a little bit less risk because he knows that he can knock his opponent out if he hits them. And Israel used that to his advantage. He knew that if he backed up, Alex would open up and all he had to do was stay composed in that pocket and and pick his shot, which he did beautifully. Mm. Well, well if, if we'd see um, Israel, um, Israel has to be, uh, there has to be an explanation for the strategy um, Israel used in this um, bout this time because I'm looking forward to a trilogy that's um, Pereira coming up for a rematch to reclaim this belt. But Israel was able to use a particular strategy to go up ahead of Pereira. Looking at um, all the hooks, the elbow move, the knee and all, he could have used the same that he did in their first bout, but he had that switch. Where did you see the switch coming, Carl, in this encounter? I really didn't expect 
him to go that route with it. He went the riskiest path with it, I think. A lot of people were saying if he's going to win, he's going to have to be 100% perfect and, and stay out the way of Alex Pereira as much as he can. And he did the opposite. He let Alex come to him and kind of got him with some reverse psychology. It'll be interesting to see if they do a trilogy fight, mm. how that works, because Alex knows that now um, and he won't make that same mistake. But also, how does Alex Pereira react to being knocked out? Because he's never had that against Israel before. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm I'm not surprised that he came in with that mentality. Everyone knows how much this rivalry with Alex Pereira means to him and he, he had a huge point to lose. It was kind of all or nothing for him at this point. Okay, now we did talk about one who got the sweetest part of this bout. It was Drake. Drake must be the richest man after this bout. He staked 400,000 US dollars on Adesanya for that knockout and another 550,000 US dollars on Adesanya winning. Totaling 950,000 US dollars. So he won both tonight and he is 2.7 million dollars richer. How does this betting work? He was so confident. Drake was so confident that Adesanya was going to clinch this one, was going to do the do this time. And now he's richer on Adesanya's head. Yeah, I mean, it worked out for him. It, it doesn't... Drake has been known to do a, a lot of these bets when it comes to big UFC fights, and they don't always work out, but he managed to get this one right, and, and fair play to him, because Israel by knockout, uh, I would imagine, was, was, was pretty good odds. But did you, did you envisage this knockout? Because we had Masvidal. He also made... Um, Drake also made some money on Masvidal's fight, too. So did, did you see this coming out with this um he had so much confidence that the knockout is going to be a by knockout nobody saw that i never saw that it was going to be by knockout but drake saw it how does this work kyle yeah just a, a good call on, on his behalf um it, he must have he must have some serious faith in Israel Adesanya, which Izzy obviously has in himself as well. I thought that if he was going to get it done it would probably be a decision and not a knockout um but that just speaks to how good Adesanya's performance was that he managed to shock a lot of us. I mean, apart from Drake, I suppose. <laughs> apart from Drake, indeed. And I'm, <laughs> he shocked me sincerely. And I'm very sure he shocked you with that knockout. I never saw that coming. I was thinking by unanimous or a technical knockout. But straight knockout was a great one for Israel Adesanya. Thank you so much, Cal. And I'm hoping that one day you get to also bet, bet so you have a lot of money on these fighters. <laughs>